we will talk about a very important part of the superficial fascia of the pectoral region called the breast, also known as the mammary gland. So basically the breast is a modified sweat gland and it is basically responsible for secreting milk for the supplementation of the newborn. Let's go ahead and talk in detail about the breast. In the females, the breast is a reproductive organ, hence it is more well developed. In males, it is more rudimentary organ, hence it is not so well developed. So the extent of the breast over the chest wall is basically, first we will talk about the horizontal extent and then we will talk about the vertical extent. Horizontally, it extends from the lateral border of the sternum all the way to the mid axillary line. So the middle part of the axilla or the mid axillary line. Horizontally, the extent of the breast is from the lateral border of the sternum all the way to the mid axillary line. And vertically, the extent of breast is from the second rib to the sixth rib. Moving on, let's study about the different quadrants of the breast. So if this is the sternum and this is the breast, the breast is divided into four quadrants. This is the nipple. It is divided into four quadrants that carry clinical significance. So there is the upper medial or you can even say the inner quadrant, the lower medial or the lower inner quadrant, and then we have the upper outer or the upper lateral quadrant and finally the lower lateral or the lower outer quadrant. The most significant of these quadrants is the upper outer quadrant. The upper outer quadrant also has an extension via which it goes into the axilla. This extension pierces the deep fascia to reach the axilla. And the piercing it makes in the deep fascia, or let's say the hole it forms in the deep fascia is called the foramen of Langer. And the whole extension is called the axillary tail of Spence. This carries clinical significance that we will talk about later. So now we know that there are four quadrants of the breast, the upper and the lower. The upper is divided into the upper medial, the upper lateral, the lower medial and the lower lateral. And the most important of these uh, quadrants is the upper outer quadrant. It also has an extension of this quadrant into the axilla called the axillary tail of Spence. And the part where it pierces the deep fascia, it forms a hole, which is called the foramen of Langer. Now let's talk about the structure of breast. As I mentioned earlier that the breast is a very important part of the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. So the breast is basically the superficial fascia of the chest region. Let's talk about the part of the breast, which is the skin. Superficial fascia is covered by the skin of the breast and the skin of the breast includes two important features. Number one is the nipple. This is a conical projection of the breast and it is pierced by multiple lactiferous ducts. Number two is the areola, which lies right at the base of the nipple it is a circular pigmented area. So the nipple, which is a conical projection, and the areola, which is lying at the base of the nipple, is a circular pigmented area that contains multiple sebaceous glands. Now let's talk more about the tissue of the breast. Every organ in the body consists of two basic features, the parenchyma and the stroma. The parenchyma is the portion of the tissue that performs the function, while the stroma is the part of the tissue which is forming the connective tissue or the supporting framework. Similarly, in the breast, we have a parenchyma and we have a stroma. What is parenchyma of the breast? Well, as we all know, the main function of the breast is to produce milk. So the parenchyma of the breast is basically the glands that produce milk. So if we talk about the breast, suppose this is the breast, this is the nipple with the areola. The parenchyma of the breast consists of multiple lobes. They are almost like the shape of balloon. And each lobe is a group of acini. A group of multiple acini form the lobe. And each lobe is being drained by 
the ducts called the lactiferous ducts. So you can say this is the lobe, this is the asini, and these are the lactiferous ducts. As I mentioned earlier, that the nipple is being pierced by 15 to 20 of these lactiferous ducts because there are 15 to 20 lobes in each breast. And these pierce the nipple where the milk is secreted from. Moreover, just at the ending of the lactiferous ducts, right beneath the areola, these lactiferous ducts are dilated. There are dilations. These dilations are called the lactiferous sinuses. The significance of these sinuses is that they store milk until the use is hormonally triggered. Now let's talk about the stroma of the breast. The stroma consists of two types of tissues. It really has fatty tissue in it and it also has fibrous tissue. So fatty tissue, as you all know, is basically full of adipose cells. Let's talk about the fibrous part of the stroma. Now what happens is the fibrous part of the stroma is forming septa or let's say divisions these divisions keep the breast bound to the deep fascia they anchor the skin of the breast to the deep fascia these fibrous septas are called the suspensory ligament of cooper so the stroma consists of the fat and the fibrous tissue fat is basically composed of the adipose cells as you know and fibrous tissue is divided into septa this each septa, which basically is known as the suspensory ligament of Cooper, is anchoring the breast to the deep fascia. Moving on, we all know that the breast is basically in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. So suppose this is the entire superficial fascia. And then we have the deep fascia. And then we have the pect major muscle. In normal cases, the superficial fascia and deep fascia are mostly attached to each other. How in the case of breast, the superficial fascia is separated from the deep fascia by means of a space. The space has very loose connective tissue. This is known as the retromammary space. The significance of the space is that it allows the breast to be freely mobile over the chest so that it is movable over the chest wall.